Hey guys, it's Matt Lewak, and today we're going to be looking at another tournament, more tournament stuff, lots of cool things, some sweet decks, some sweet tech, some weird stuff, all sorts of things should be interesting, so let's get started. Okay, so uh, we have a, a rock deck, right, uh, starting at the top at this 45-player tournament. And uh, this is pretty normal. Um, we have a Living Wish, again, not always played, but you got your typical Living Wish stuff. Plague Spitter, Utabi Rain Tang Genesis, um, Weathered Wretch, etc. Uh, then, of course, we have Blasterderm, again, uh, sometimes a, a card, sometimes included, sometimes not. And, of course, Vorras Stronghold, uh, a very sweet card, can give you more resiliency, some card advantage. Um, uh, more life, right, if you recur things like Ravenous Bailoth. Uh, so pretty sweet, pretty sweet. So a lot of really cool stuff here, but a fairly standard rock deck. And here we go. We got Goblins. Uh, this is a fairly typical list. Uh, nothing too weird. Again, not a huge fan of Ancient Tomb. Um, if I even play any, uh, which is fairly unusual, be like a copy. They, again, for all the reasons I've said before, they're fairly bad in multiples. The damage adds up. It hurts you in matchups. That can be uh, more difficult occasionally. And, of course, it, it takes up slots from things like Rishid Import, which is um, more generally useful in more matchups, uh, helps your uh, best draws. Think like turn one lackey, turn two port them, maybe turn three like resolve war chief, or, you know, those, those kind of things. So, yeah, uh, sideboard not too weird. Um, pretty pretty usual stuff there. Uh, same thing with the main deck. Uh, but yeah, it's a pretty pretty good mono red list. All right, now we have landstill with typical landstill stuff. Um, nothing too weird here. You know, we got the random forbid and prohibit and dismantling blow and stuff, which we um, kind of sort of expect at this point. Uh, but also we have Teferi's Response. Very sweet, powerful card, and uh, very good against things like Dust Bowl, uh, Stone Rain or Pillage, um, Wasteland, things like that. So, or even like um, like a Lightning Bolt on your Mishra's Factory, that kind of thing. So, pretty sweet stuff here. All right. <laughs> oh boy. So we got some we got some weird stuff going on here. Uh, again, the first thing that jumps out to me, of course, is Lake of the Dead. Lake of the Dead is a, a card that's not uh, <laughs> not exactly stock in these lists. Um, it's a little wonky. Uh, it's not bad by any means. Um, it can, you know, produce a bunch of mana at the cost of, you know, regular mana production by, you know, sacrificing swamps and stuff. But it's a cool card. Um, I'd, I'd probably play it just because I love it, you know. Um, but also another weird thing, no dark ritual. Um, very, very weird. Uh, definitely one of the reasons to play like a black aggressive deck would be dark ritual, just for those like duress and therapies and, and uh, all your go uh, goblins, all your zombies and stuff. Um, a lot of these cards are pretty stock. Uh, some of them are a little strange. Uh, something like Soulless One, um, powerful card, but four mana is a lot, so I'm not a big fan of that. Um, Cabal Interrogator, this is kind of cool as a two of. Again, it's pretty sweet with your dresses and therapies and just more um, consistent hand disruption, pretty strong. Nantuko Husk, so you can kind of do cool like sacrifice stuff things, um, like, you know, sacrifice festering goblins to kill blockers and, and, and things like that. Um, but that's, you know, another three mana card. I mean, it's a little a little much without a lot of sacrifice synergies. I'm not a huge fan. Um, and, of course, Zombie Cannibal in the sideboard. I guess it is a sort of faster, um, uh, like, Withered Wretch effect, although this deck already plays for Withered Wretch. Uh, so, yeah, it seems it seems a little excessive, but maybe it was really good for this this person. Um, not, I'm not... I can't even remember... I've played Zombie Cannibal before in like some of my casual decks like a million years ago, uh, but I don't think I've ever seen it in like in a tournament. But, you know, it is free graveyard hate on the one drops. So that's kind of cool. And of course it is on tribe. So 
hey, uh, but that is a lot of graveyard eight. Uh, seems a little excessive. Um, and the infest might be a little uh, wonky because you have so many low toughness creatures, but if you're expecting them to kill all your stuff, you know, there are times when you can uh, time it where like you infest, kill all their stuff, and then you can start replaying your creatures. But yeah, lots of lots of wonky stuff going on here. Like 62 cards main deck feels a little bit much. You know, I mean, some things are um, a little unusual, maybe like the Grave Born Muse or Plague Bearers, but those aren't that strange in the zombie decks. But anyways, so let's just go ahead and move on. All right, now we have a Parfait list, and this is not that strange. Um, we got Meling Mage Defense Grid in the sideboard for, you know, the matchups like Control and um, Combo. Uh, and yeah, then a bunch of one ofs in the sideboard, all that kind of good stuff. So this is just a typical um, Oath Parfait list. So nothing strange here. Um, yeah, we got the, the main deck Curse Totem, which we don't always see, and then the Black Vice main deck, which we don't always see, uh, but is by no means uh, unusual. Unusual. Uh, yeah. So all all this stuff is pretty 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 standard for the the Oath Parfait decks. So not nothing too wonky here. Okay, and now we have Dead Guy Ale, and again this is um, all all cards you could you could see playing in the main deck right uh you know graveborn muse i guess is you know okay just another card advantage engine um same thing with uh you know things like nintuko shade hypnotic specter mother of runes exalted angel i mean it's all pretty standard stuff really you can mix and match and be a little bit faster be a little bit more mid-rangey you know dress verdict vindicate that's that's totally stock standard the mana base of course is really where where things sometimes break down um i'm not a huge fan of like all of these land i mean i'd probably I, I think i think the biggest thing is just like i would probably only play three planes just to reduce the number of hands that are just like non-functional i mean you only play one tainted field which i think is pretty good uh but drawing multiple planes is pretty bad you know so um I think I think it'd be a little bit better probably just cut a planes for a swamp. Otherwise, the mana base more or less looks pretty good. And same thing with the sideboard, pretty pretty good. Um, but the Strumgall Cabal, <laughs> oh boy, uh, this is an old one. This is um this was played in <laughs> what a weird card. Uh, this was played in uh, Napster uh, back in the day. So that's like <laughs> the, the 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 mono black deck that won nationals in 2000, I believe. Yeah, that deck was crazy. Anyways, uh, it, it tutored for Stromgall Cabal. I think it even played at main deck with, with Vampiric Tutor because um, th this card was, uh, I think, reprinted in 6th edition or something. A anyways, um, against uh, white decks, you know, obviously. So uh, good against something like Rebels or, or any, other, any other white deck at the, at the time. Uh, what a weird, weird card. I mean... <laughs> I don't know. It's pretty wonky. Anyways, uh, pretty good here. Uh, countering white spells. <laughs> oh man, what a world. What a, what a strange card. They don't make them like that anymore. In fact, they stopped making them like that a long time ago. Uh, anyways. All right. Now this I kind of like in some respects. Again, all the goblin stuff is pretty normal. Pretty normal stuff here. Um, again, I actually like playing Lightning Bolt main deck. I think that's, that's, that's fine. Um, but the mana, the mana is a little wonky. So if you're playing white, I mean, you're gonna, you're basically priced into playing four Battlefield Forge and, uh, four, um, a City of Brass more or less, or maybe like three City of Brass and a Plains. But that also like really cuts into your ability to play like, anything like wasteland and of course you got to play 24 lands especially for splashing you just don't um have the ability to play less that's just that's just too ambitious um and you're just courting disaster at that point but uh I, I do like the white splash um i don't i mean the, the aura blast at least makes sense is um 
uh, understandable, like why you would want to play it. You kill enchantment, draw a card for two mana, instant speed, that's very good. Um, but White Queen should just be more Aura Blast, because Aura Blast is just better than it, or uh, Disenchant or something. And Humble, sweet, cool card, but it should just be Plow, because Plow, A, kills the thing for half the mana, um, and of course the the life gain is, is irrelevant for this deck. So interesting stuff, um, but I think the mana is super misbuilt. I think like the sideboard is really wonky, uh, but other than that, like it's you know pr fairly fairly normal uh, stuff going on. So all right, and this is goblins, same stuff that we've always said. Um, I mostly like this, although like Arth Charm is just a little meh to me. Not a huge fan. Um, and like I said, only like one tomb, uh, but the rest looks good to me. Got the forest on the board, which we sometimes see with the, the green splash or even black, black splash. And uh, yeah, um, I wonder, I mean, cause like there's, can be a lot of, well, no, that's probably fine. That's probably fine. Never mind. I think, I think six um of the sort of artifact destruction effects are fine because hearth charm can do other things and naturalize of course can hit enchantments so that's probably fine so yeah other than that um other than me just not being super hot on hearth charm and just not really liking two ancient tombs um i think this deck is pretty good uh, a little weird to only play two gem palms but with hearth charm it's maybe a little bit more understandable although again still not a still not a big fan but yeah, pr pretty, pretty, pretty good stuff here though. All right. Uh, this one has way too much artifact destruction. I mean, I'm not sure where you need meltdown and shadow storm and naturalize. And in addition to like hearth charm, it feels like we're really, you know, we could take out the, uh, meltdowns and shatter storms and play other cards. I'm not sure what, like literally anything else. Uh, another Pyroblast uh, would be a good start. Um, anything like that. <laughs> That's a little bit too much. Definitely playing one land too few. And uh, the, the main deck is mostly okay, but like the four Pyromancer is exactly three too many. Uh, one Pyromancer is good uh, as a tutor target, right, to like to Alpha Strike or whatever, and has some applications in the mirror in some some instances um so that that's something to keep in mind too but four pyromancers way 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 too many uh that's that's crazy that's super crazy like if you want to play like that kind of thing just play like the fourth siege gang or something like you'll just get more <laughs> more mileage that way um but yeah yeah definitely one or two lands light definitely too many artifact destruction kind of things um, which is a little strange and of course I'm not a huge fan of color of the claw in this deck again that's it's more of uh, a, a solution looking for a problem like hoblins just doesn't if you're splashing green it's for naturalize basically or, or maybe like in weird metagames you're playing compost or something of the sort but uh, yeah color of the claw is not exactly needed like this card is just a it's pretty pretty obvious that it's um, it's telegraphed very easily telegraphed um, as well as it just like not being a goblin's a big thing um, and the decks like oh yeah how does how does this deck with three siege gangs three or four siege gangs four matron four ringleader like how does it ever recover from wrath effects like I mean come on that's that's silly that's silly anyways so yeah let's move on let's move on all right now we have dream halls and this is basically just, you know, a bunch of lands that produce multiple mana, slam your dream halls, um, and then of course um, uh, cast all your draw spells, or and if you can beforehand mana severance out all the lands in your deck, so all your draw spells hit more draw spells, and uh, you that pretty much means I don't think you can fizzle at that point. Um, yeah, so yeah, so you can fizzle without mana severance. Uh, but with Mana Severance, if you cast it, you you don't fizzle at all, which is nice. Of course, the big problem with Dream Halls is A, it's a 5-mana blue enchantment, so it's Reb Bait, um, which is pretty brutal. 
um, and your mana is a little wonky, which can be vulnerable to, to, to land disruption, things like that. Uh, but the, the deck is pretty sweet, pretty fun. Oh, and <laughs> Dream Halls is also uh, symmetrical, so keep that in mind too. Um, but yeah, this is this is definitely a pretty fun deck, uh, pretty sweet. Like I can't remember the last time I, I saw anyone use Reminisce <laughs> in uh, any deck, but pretty cool stuff here. All right, and now we have Madness. And this is just basically Madness. Uh, nothing wonky. Um, the Centaur Garden's not that weird. Just gives you a little bit more value from your mana base. This is definitely a card that saw play in the uh, block and, and uh, standard um, Madness decks back in the day. So this is a pretty pretty sweet, uh, pretty sweet card. Um, but nothing weird here. Nothing weird here. All right, now we have Spy. And again, this is fairly stock. A couple of weird things, but uh, Lava Dart um, isn't that weird uh, because a lot of times you're, you'll have like three or four slots left, or depending, about three to four slots left of like you're just playing different versions of Shock. So Seal of Fire, Firebolt, that kind of stuff. Lava Dart can basically, the floor on it is basically Shock, um, but the upside, of course, is very good against the other uh, creature decks. Um, very, very sweet there. And, uh, you know, pretty cool, pretty cool card. Uh, so yeah, definitely not that strange to see it in the main deck. Um, three Jackal Pup is like, gotta be 100% wrong. That's crazy. Um, two Goblin Patrol. I think two is like the max you'd ever want to play Goblin Patrol. because You never really want it in your opening hand because it's very awkward with like sequencing because it has Echo. But it feels pretty good in the uh, mid game, like turn three or so, um, when you don't have a ton to do with your your mana, um, and it, it, it's very good with the winter orbs in the sideboard. Uh, winter orb is just think of it as like a time walk, and the more creatures you have in play, the more powerful the extra turns you get, and the, and the amount you can slow down your opponent. Um, obviously, it's, it seems like there's you would think that there is a little bit of um, dis synergy because this deck can be pretty mana hungry in the late game with curse scroll um but that's okay that's okay like again it's it's kind of like it's more more like it seems like it shouldn't work but um yeah it's 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 a little bit different like especially again most decks don't expect it if like late game they're tapping out to do a bunch of stuff or whatever um slamming a winter orb is going to be far more impactful than getting like a couple uses out of your uh curse scroll over some turns because uh, the winter orb will probably just win you the game uh, at that point with any number of creatures in play so yeah definitely pretty sweet um, pretty normal sideboard and uh, nothing weird here all right oh boy <laughs> um, what do we have here well we have a maverick survival get in so we got the green light uh, <laughs> tutory toolbox thing and the, <laughs> the survival stuff which is part of that, and then the Armageddon <laughs> and Terraform, and oh man, I mean this deck just literally is like, I want to play every good green and white card in in the format, um, but it doesn't look bad or anything, it's very, very cool, um, that is a lot of stuff, but uh, yeah, so, so <laughs> oh wow, um, let me see, I'm trying to look, I don't want to miss anything, I don't think it plays Enlightened Tutor, uh, is there, oh, that's so many one ofs. Yeah, I don't see any Enlightened Tutor, but that might be something, again, with these random one ofs in the sideboard, um, to tutor those up. Uh, one or two Enlightened Tutors uh, could be pretty sweet. Um, but yeah, basically, uh, you got all the, the Armageddon, uh, Terravore stuff, so the Terrageddon. Um, you have just random good value creatures like Exalted Angel. You have some disruptive things like glow rider and um, mother of runes and um, querian ranger and stuff like that uh and then you have you know your things like uptabi orangutan spike weavers your survival targets and of course armageddon uh very very good disruption great with glow rider of course even though i mean it seems like oh blah 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 it makes it cost five mana or whatever but you have uh you know cradle um a bunch of creatures to produce mana so yeah you can really lock them out 
um, with with Geddon and Glow Rider and stuff. So pretty sweet there. Um, this deck can do all sorts of things. Very cool stuff. Big fan of this. Uh, yeah. And uh, yeah, definitely looking at a Lightning Tutor in the main deck or sideboard or something just to have better access uh, to all of these cards, all these one-ups, you know. Um, definitely something uh, to consider. But this is very cool. Um, man, just look at this thing. Just crazy. Just crazy. Uh, gosh, I, yeah, I, I don't even know what to say. Very sweet. Very sweet. All right, now we have the Devourer Oath five-color deck with all sorts of things. We got Blood Moon, you know. Uh, I guess if, you, <laughs> if you're trying to... I mean, obviously against non-basic heavy decks... Uh, I'm not exactly sure how uh, effective that's going to be. Um, hmm. I mean, it's interesting. It's interesting. Uh, maybe I'm just blanking on on exactly what the exact purpose of Blood Moon is or what it's supposed to fix. Um, City of Solitude is, again, fairly obvious. Like, that turns off uh, counter magic uh, and, and even abilities and stuff. So you can combo off um, unimpeded. So that's very cool. Uh, and then, of course, just everything else is just typical stuff you see in Light and Tutor, uh, fetching all parts of your combo. Uh, very cool. Very cool indeed. So, yeah, there you go. And now we have Grow a Tog, and this looks, a very, looks like a very nice list. Um, I think this looks pretty close to perfect or, or really well built. Um, again, the only thing I like to do is play something like an additional Undiscovered Paradise. Uh, just as another um, five color source just to make it a little bit easier to cast your spells um, especially in, in, from your sideboard when you're bringing in things like source of plowshares another tog you plague you know that kind of stuff so uh, but pretty sweet looking definitely a sweet looking deck uh, big big fan um, but yeah I definitely I definitely like the uh, the, the extra undiscovered paradise to prevent sort of wonky situations where you don't have access to all five colors. Uh, but other than that, it's, yeah, this is, this is great. All right. And now we have something totally crazy. Now, this is the Pyrostatic Oath uh, deck, and it's playing a bunch of burn spells and, uh, you know, things like Sulfuric Vortex and Pyrostatic Pillar um, and Oath of Druids to Oath Up Bloodfire Colossus. Definitely a card I really liked when I was a kid. Um, yeah, o Oath Up Bloodfire Colossus is sweet. I mean, it's just so sweet. <laughs> Look at that card. Um, yeah, this thing is awesome. Uh, <laughs> um, and, of course, uh, it has a transformational sideboard, so when the Oath package just isn't very good, you can take out the Oath, Blessings, and Bloodfire Colossus to bring in the for Mongoose, for Dryad, um, and you can play like a kind of uh, Urnum and Burnum, red-green uh, kind of thing, so that's that's pretty cool. No Urnum Jins, of course, unfortunately, but uh, them's the breaks, you know. Um, the only thing that's a little weird to me is the Pyrokinesis, well, and the Bobbles too, we'll get to that, but the Pyrokinesis, uh, you know, especially against like creatureless decks, you're going to have so many bad cards like the um, Oath, Blessings, and, and the Bloodfire Colossus are just going to be bleh, you know? Um, I think something like Arc Lightning, if you want the same effect, more or less, as Pyrokinesis, um, Arc Lightning can at least go face, so that's something. So the floor and it's a lot higher. Obviously, Pyrokinesis is a completely ridiculous card, um, but yeah, I mean, I, I'm a little unsure about Pyrokinesis, uh, so that one seems a little bit suspect. Of course, I haven't played this deck, uh, so keep that in mind. Um, and the Bob is a little wonky. I mean, it's um, obviously really bad with Pillar, uh, like if you draw it after your, your Pillars in play, of course. But it does give you a little bit more threshold for Mongoose. And eh, even even then, I'm not super into it. Um, I, I think that could be probably just anything else. But again. You know, haven't played, blah, blah, blah. Um, and the rest of the sideboard, Blasts, another Naturalized, Crips, that kind of thing. So definitely got a lot of different things coming around here to, to make this deck, and that's very cool. 
So yeah, definitely. Uh, again, like uh, the winner deck is is uh, something totally crazy, totally strange. Another oath variant. Uh, so that's very sweet. But that's it, guys. So that that's it for today. I hope this got your noggin jogging. I hope this was interesting to you, made you think. Uh, so yeah, that's it. Another big sweet tournament we covered. Very cool. So thanks for stopping by and have a great day.